hi there welcome back to this channel in this video i'm going to take you through bounded functions bounded functions so in our previous video we dealt with monotonic functions the monotonic increasing and decreasing functions we looked at that and we saw an example so this is calculus family and if this is the first time you've been on this channel kindly show some love by subscribing to this channel and also please watch this video to the end so what are bounded functions bounded functions so if we see bounded literally means that there's something which has what boundaries, right? Boundaries. Boundaries. So if any realistic thing has physical boundaries or limit to which it cannot exceed, then we say that thing is bounded, right? So that same thing or that same scenario can be applied to functions. So we have certain functions which can never ever cross certain limits, right? So a function is said to be bounded if it has certain limits which it can never Crossed. Okay, so as we have bounded functions, obviously we have something called unbounded functions, right? Unbounded functions. Unbounded functions. So now a bounded function will always have, let's say, a number L, which is um, a member of all row numbers, so that f of x is always greater than what L. Then it means that. This is the what left boundary, okay? So for any number L, so that our function, whenever it, I mean the function over all the domain is greater than L, it means that L becomes the what lower boundary of our function, lower boundary of our function. Mean that our function can never exceed this on the left side because it, all the functional values are all greater than this, meaning that this becomes what a lower boundary, okay? Then if you have Another, let's say L2. Let me make it this L1 and let me make here L2. So that it's a member of all row numbers and f of x is always less than or equal to what R. Or maybe less than, it's always less than R. Sorry, it's always less than L2. Then we say that our function is what? Our function has an upper boundary of L2. So upper boundary, upper boundary. L2. So all our functional values can never exceed this. So bounded functions obviously gives us a quantified, a finite sort function. So at all times, the function can have limits. Okay. At all times, the function can have limits. So now let's typically see some example here. So as you mean, I have f of x is equal to x minus 1, right? Over an interval of, let's say, um zero one closed so this is the interval or this is the domain okay this is the domain which we are trying to find the functional values over so within this domain you realize that when i put zero here when i put zero into my function that's zero minus one i'm going to get negative one you get it so meaning that my function will surely have the range of my function will surely start from negative one okay then i'll have when i put one inside i get zero like this so meaning that my function can never exceed negative one on the hot on the left side negative one happens to be the lowest possible number our function can go right so therefore we can say that our function has a lower boundary of what negative one and our function can never exceed what zero because this is the interval which we are dealing with Within this interval, no functional value within this interval can ever get a value greater than zero because the maximum is even one. So when I put one here, you are going to get what zero. So to find bounded functions or the boundary, we always put in our, I mean, endpoint of our interval or domain. So when you put the endpoint, so I'm going to give you a b as my interval, okay? So with this a b, I will have to find f of a and f of what b. Then my boundaries will obviously become what f of a as my lower boundary and f of b as my what upper boundary, but they will all be like this less than f of x, less than f of x. So you wouldn't add them to, to it, okay? Or though this has a negative one zero as boundaries within a different domain, the same function can have different boundaries, okay? So the boundaries are domain specific, that is what you should take note of. The boundaries are domain specific so now let's take this function g of x is equal to absolute of square root of what x plus one 
and I've given the interval to be 0, 4, 0, 4. So now, when I put 0 inside, what am I getting? 1, right? When I put 4 inside, what am I getting? Square root of what? 5, is that not it? So right now, we can say that the least, the least number this function can ever get is what? 1. Therefore, you can say that this function is bounded below by 0, is bounded below by negative 1, but anything less than 1, the function cannot go beyond, right? Anything less than 0, the function can never go beyond. Okay, so let's see something. When I draw this, this way, okay, you realize that when I draw the graph, when I draw a graph and this place is A, this place is B, then we say that this are what? This is a bounded function. Let me say this is a bounded because the function ends here and ends here. It can't exceed all these endpoints. Okay. Yes. But something like an unbounded function will surely start from infinity and also ends infinity. It doesn't end or it doesn't have any boundaries. Okay. It doesn't have any boundaries. So that's an unbounded function. But for the bounded function to surely be confined within an interval so that it will never exceed a certain threshold both on the left and right. And simply, you just have to put your domain, the endpoint in the domain inside the function. And once you get the fixed endpoint as your range, anything less than the left side, anything less than the right side, will surely be your upper, lower and upper boundary respectively. So thank you for being with me in this video. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and also share.